You know, if I am a paladin and I behave in a dishonorable way, what happens? Is, is it just that that's it? And I'm, and I'm done. I'm not a paladin anymore. I'm not a follower of honor anymore. What's my way back? If I am a bard or I'm a follower of compassion and I behave, you know, just in a, in a moment of, in, you know, just heated passion, I do something that communicates just like utter disgust and despising someone. But then later I realize, you know, well, I was just in a rage and I shouldn't have done that. And I'm, I'm genuinely sorry for having done that. But what's my way back? Like, am I still within the fold of compassion? Am I still a bard? Or am I just, am I done? What's my way back? And those are kind of, you know, those are the questions that I keep kind of bubbling up in my head as I watched each of these virtue questions play out because we're never really given a clear answer in the Ultima series. There's only a couple of games that even really address the idea of, you know, citizens of a town acting in ways that are fundamentally contrary to the virtue of that town. Ultima 5 and then Ultima 9. And in both of those cases, it's a magical influence that's causing people to act unvirtuously. And so it's a magical solution that brings people back. And it's literally like flipping a switch, right? Either the Shadow Lord is in town or not. And if the Shadow Lord's in town, then people act one way. And if not, then they act the other way. In Ultima 9, either the column is still active or it isn't. If the column is still active, people act in one way. And if the column isn't active, then they act in a different way. I think maybe what's a little bit different is that in Ultima 9, of course, people are, they express regret, right? Like they're more cognizant of the fact that they were acting in a way that it was against the core virtue of their town. And so when the column is, you know, shut off and they are liberated from its effects, they're penitent. 